If you've been overwhelmed in creating content to market your business or feeling stuck on what to say or whether what you're saying at all is relevant to your audience, today's video is for you. I'm going to be covering three very simple content pillar focuses that's going to help you to create content that truly matters to the audience that you really want to attract to your business, find aligned clients and grow your brand. Stay tuned. Thank you so very much for joining me today and if you're new here welcome and I'm Liddy Lee I'm the work reinvention coach and solopreneur strategist at Screw the Cubicle the name's pretty self-explanatory but this channel is really dedicated to helping purpose-driven folks like you to make a successful transition from the traditional nine to five conventional career into an independent business that you are going to love. So a lot of the content on this channel is going to be dedicated to making that transition, creating meaningful work from your genius zone, and of course, doing work that impacts the world and work that you can't wait to wake up for every morning to do. So if you are new here and you haven't subscribed yet, I do have new videos coming up out every single month. And you can subscribe by just hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell button to be the first to know when new videos come your way. I want to get started by talking a little bit about what I mean by content that matters. Now, we know that content is what helps to bring people to learn more about your business, to find out more about what you offer, and most importantly, be intrigued about the work that you're doing, especially if they're actively seeking for someone like you, right, to help them. And so content that really matters has to be really relevant to the work that you're producing. And of course, content is everywhere, right? Could be a blog, could be a YouTube video like this one. It could be social media content. And of course, in social media, there are times that you might be sharing things that are a little bit on the outskirts of your genius zone or what is the work that you do, right? Some things about your personal life. But my suggestion and encouragement to new business owners that are using content to grow their business is to try to focus at least 80% of their content on really relevant educational um, topics topics that are really in alignment with what they teach, what they share, what they consult on, whatever is the service-based business that you're creating. So less of what you had for breakfast, <laughs> sharing on social media, and a lot more to do with what it is that you are being paid to do and how can you use content to really educate your clients instead of just marketing and selling your offers is really planting really great educational seeds so that you're arming your potential audience members with what they need to know in order to work with you and be interested in understanding what solutions that you have to offer. And most importantly, whatever content that you are creating, it acts as these ingredients that people find online, right? It's how is this look, these little cookie crumbles, right? Cookie crumbs on the interwebs that really lead people to your website, lead people to your brand. Uh, and as an outcome, it's going to help you to build credibility and trust for the people that don't know you just yet. But if once they consume really valuable information, uh, they're going to start to trust you and going to start to get more intimate in the relationship they have with your business. All right, let's jump into the three simple content pillars I promised you. And it's going to be three things that's going to be easy to remember. And it's three P's. The first P is your personal story. Second P is your philosophy, which are really the beacon and foundational values and beliefs that your work is built upon. And the last P is problems to solve. What it is that you're truly providing solutions for, what are the direct issues that you're really solving with the work that you do, and we want to highlight those in your content. Okay, let's start with the first P, which is the easiest type of content to start because you know this like the back of your hand. And the trick is really knowing that you're worthy to share your story, right? You uh, should know that actually your story is what sets you apart from other people that might be doing what you're doing. And it really humanizes your business to others so that they can actually resonate that you're a human, that you also have potentially suffered with the very problems that you're helping your audience uh, to go through. 
And also it really gives you that credibility that you've been walking your own talk, right? As you are teaching a lot of what it is that you've experienced in your life and in your business that you're sharing with others. So where do we start when we think about your personal story? Because one of the things that I get a lot from my clients when they ask me this question, right, is about how much is too much to share, you know, or there might be people that don't want to share every single thing of their personal story. And that is totally okay. Having boundaries in your business is very healthy for you. And you get to decide how much of your personal story that you want to share. But I thought that if I could give you a couple of sort of angles around this so that you can feel that as long as it's relevant to your work, it's relevant to be helpful to the very people that you really want to help, then I think it is worth sharing. So one part of your personal story that's going to be really important is really your personal why, right? Why does your business exist and why should it matter to other people? Uh, In other words, what is your purpose for sharing this business? What's your purpose for creating this business? What's motivating you to do all this hard work to produce great work for others, right? And so your why potentially comes from a turning point in your life, right? A time in your life where you decide that something is important to you. or maybe something specific happened to you in your different life stages of life. Like for me, I screw the cubicle, right? It was motivated by burnout, by being completely unfulfilled in my corporate job and trying to find an alternative way to have a fulfilling career, to have more autonomy over my time. And yeah, suffering a burnout was kind of the pain (laughs) that I had to go through in order for me to build something uh, that I cared about and share that journey of my own findings and my own discoveries about myself in the world world with others and supporting others through that, right? For the last almost a decade of doing this work. So think about what your turning points might have been in your life that have caused you to be motivated and driven to do the work that you're currently doing in your business, right? Take a look at that timeline of things that have happened in your life, right? If I think about my my story, right? My own hero's journey of what got me from pain and suffering to, right, the arc of the the turning point, that next chapter of realization, right? Um, What I had to try, what transformations that I had to create in my life in order to become that next version of myself, right? All those turning points in my life is really relevant to share because very likely someone in my audience is probably experiencing that, right? I'm kind of talking to Lydia from eight years ago when she was having that corporate burnout. And that's something you can think about too, right? How can you, what are the stories and things that you want to share with the old version of you, especially if the old version of you represents the ideal client that you're really looking to serve? What's also really relevant to share is what you found out along the way, right? What new truths, what new beliefs now guide your choices and your decisions in your life and in your business. Those are really relevant parts of your personal story to share because it shapes your your business identity, shapes what people rely on you for and what it is that is the foundational practices, right? And values that are behind your work so that When people hear those stories, they either resonate with it or they don't. And that's okay if they don't. They're just maybe not your people. But the more that you really touch upon this honest, transparent journey of what you've gone through to discover the truth for yourself, that's going to be really relevant in attracting the people that are going to say, aha, it's like you're in my head. It's like you're talking my language. And I think the more authentic your story is to be shared, right, in the online world, the more people are going to be attracted to that rather than something safe, right? Something that isn't that personal. And I think people, especially if you're in the people business of service based helping others create transformation, um, that transformational story of yours should really, really be shared. Okay, so that's the first P of personal story. The second P is your philosophy, right? Which I talked about as your beacon, the foundational values and beliefs you have behind your work. Now, there are going to be other people that do what you do. That is a non-negotiable. And it's probably a good thing that there are people doing what you do because that means there's a marketplace for it. It's nothing to be afraid of. How you're going to be standing out is really your perspective. So your philosophy really holds your point of view, your perspective, your lenses, how you view the world. That's going to be very different from other people because your story is different and your lenses of life is different, right? And we want to hold on to that as part of your differentiating factor, right? Your unique 
sort of perspective, right, that guides how you talk about this work and how you support others that are going through that journey, right? So when you think about your philosophy, I know that's a very big word to digest. So I want you to think about what are some aha insights that either you've experienced as yourself going through the same problem, or maybe it's clients that you've helped or friends or anybody in your life that you've supported that's aligned, or that's, you know, in relation to your work. Um, what were some of the aha moments that people have said to you or you've experienced yourself that you really feel that is worthy to share, right? Or simply, you can even, re even reframe that question to what do you wish people knew? right? That's part of your work that maybe they're not finding out on their own, that maybe you see out there in the world that they're reading. And there's a different take that you have around that based on your experience. That should be shared as content that matters to your audience, because again, it showcases your process. It showcases what you find valuable and important and what can be the, the, the big change or aha moment that's going to get people to their goal or their outcome in a more easeful way, in a more authentic way, right? Whatever are those values that are behind your work. Um, I want you to also think about, you know, what your process is, right? So when you think about what you're offering in your services, what you're offering in the journey of helping people get from A to B, right? The before and after effect, right? What do they like before they come to work with you? What's the after, right? Persona of them when they are finished working with you. I want you to think about what that journey is. And if you haven't done that, that's a really, really good practice to, to, to do, right? For your work, because you should have a framework, right? One of the biggest things I teach in my in my um, my own foundational course called the 90 day launch is supporting people to create this map of what they teach, what they share, how they bring people to results, because people want to buy a system. People want to buy a solution that has structure and a framework and a map and look at that process. Think about what content angles and topics that you can create based on those stages of your process, based on these very strong pieces that if people can just do these pieces properly, right, they would have a much better chance at getting to the results that they're looking for. Uh, so for example, at my program, 90 Day Launch, I have a six phase framework, right? I don't talk about every single phase all the time, but I will pick parts of those phases that I know are most relevant to an inaugural problem that my my audience has, right? So um, if I talk about marketing, it wouldn't be advanced marketing topics because I know that's not where they're at, but I'm going to talk about topics that are going to kickstart their marketing journey as new business owners because that's my niche, right? That's my audience type. And so picking the parts of the process of what you do, right? Um, that's most relevant to where people are at right now instead of where they should be is going to psychologically help people understand that you get what they're going through, right? You're, you're talking about what, what they're feeling, thinking, doing, saying today, and you're offering some advice, right? Some good content that's going to move them past some of the in initial stuck points to be able to open up the next door. And that's what's going to encourage people to want to find out more, especially if you've hit the mark with what they're experiencing today. And the last thing about philosophy is really thinking about what are these values? What are those beliefs that shape your work, right? Uh, if you're unclear about that, that can be why you're fuzzy too, right? You might be trying to say what other people out there in terms of competitors and other businesses might be saying, and you want to kind of ground down on what it is that you believe in your work, right? What it is that you might do slightly differently than other people, and what it is that you might have even failed on or be disappointed on before in how things were done normally, and what was a new path, right? What's a new version of um, a new pathway that you chose that maybe g gave you a more easeful, you know, real way of getting to your goals that you truly want to share as a mindset set shift, right, as a little bit of a different approach uh, that might actually make the biggest difference for people that may not have been learning this from other people, right, that might not have gotten their hands on that knowledge and that wisdom that you have to share. And the third P of content that matters is 
problems. Now, if you've watched some of my older videos, you would have known that how I define your niche and how I believe is the simplest way to really look at what it is that you want to do, what is the niche that you want to serve, is really thinking about what are the most highest problems, highest priority problems that you want to solve, right? Problems are a great indicator for what we should be offering, who we should be targeting that has those, those very problems, and talking about our solutions in relation to those problems in a much more effective way way because that's what people are um, urgently trying to solve, right? Their problem that they're endlessly Googling in the middle of the night and trying to find someone to support them. So if you focus content on problems to solve for your marketplace, it's going to bring the FAQs, right? It's going to bring all the people that are looking for how to do something, right? They're Googling that in the middle of the night. They're going to find an article. They're going to find a video that you produced, and that's going to right help them get into that um, love lovely rabbit hole of great content that leads to your offers as well. So if you're feeling fuzzy on what are these problems that I should be solving and that that lend a hand in, in supporting me to figure out what topics I should be creating content on, I want you to think about FAQs, right? What are the frequently asked questions that you're getting asked the most? Um, when it comes to your niche and your audience type. Now, if you haven't done that already, you might want to check out one of my videos about market research. I'm going to put it on the link in the descriptions on how to create uh, successful market research um, angles and topics and uh, where to find market research candidates. Because if you're feeling a little fuzzy on problems to solve, that's going to be a big indicator of why you're also feeling extremely stuck on creating content, right? That means you don't understand your customer enough to be creating relevant content for them. I find content can be easier to create when you think about questions, right? What are some of the top questions people are asking and how would I want to answer those questions? And then if you don't know the answer, do a bit of market research, do a survey, ask people individually what are their problems when it comes to this topic that you solve in your business. So giving you an example for my business, um, some of my inaugural before problems for my clients are things like not knowing what kind of business they should be starting from their skill sets, not knowing how to make sense of their resume and their body of work to decide on what's purposeful and profitable for them to, to, to work on or build a business around right in the next phase of their career. Some of the before uh, questions I get is also things like, how do I do this? You know, how do I create a business and be a business owner if I'm still having to keep my full time job? How do I juggle that time balance, right? And energy balance. Or it could be about, am I making the right decision? How do I take risks more comfortably, right? So there's all these sort of before questions, these inaugural pain points that causes my clients to feel really stuck on even entertaining an idea of a business because until right those questions are answered they don't really have the stomach right to think about business uh things that they have to be building on so part of my job as a content creator is to answer the call of those questions and i might run trainings on it that people can sign up for it could be youtube videos i have a whole playlist in corporate transition uh you know i i i plant those seeds about my own story about making those decisions in my social media right all those little bits really lead people to removing that obstacle and therefore being a lot more warmed up to your main offer right which is the thing you truly do in order to get people right to those very goals that people pay you for the last tip I have about understanding problems is about your industry. Um, I, I love this question in particular. What makes you frustrated and angry about your industry, <laughs> right? So when I look at my industry of career coaches, business coaches, uh, life coaches as well, right? That kind of is in my realm. Um, there are a couple of things I don't agree with. I don't agree with the hustle mentality. I don't agree with traditional careers being the only pathway to success. Um, I also don't agree with having a bigger business is the only way to go if you want lifestyle freedom right? So there's a lot of um, philosophies that I believe in that might be slightly different from my colleagues, from other people. There's no right or wrong here, right? It's just what I believe in, right? But what what's my anger and my frustration might be that that's the only message out there, <laughs> right? That the only way you can make money or the only way to be successful if you follow the crowd in this way. 
right? Uh, I also have a whole rant, right, that I care about, which is about producing meaningful work we want to wake up for rather than just anything that makes money. So it's grounded in intention and purpose whenever we do work that matters to us. And not everybody is always talking about that when it comes to business decisions. And that's certainly something, right, that I do a little bit more uniquely in my business. So that's what I think about sometimes when I think about what do I want to talk about that's a little different from what's going on out there. I might read an article. I might read a Forbes article that doesn't sit quite right with me. And that gives me a clue as to what I might want to say. How do I want to share my voice that's, that is going to be an alternative perspective to what's the popular opinion right in the industry? So maybe that uh, prompt really resonates with you as well. Okay, so three P's again, just to reiterate and repeat is P, number one, personal story. P number two, philosophy, and P number three is problems to solve. I really hope that this video today really helped to plant seeds for you in terms of what are some simple ways to really focus on just three content pillars to get started in creating content. And the last note I want to leave you with is that there don't drown in perfectionism of thinking you have to get it all right in order to put your voice out there. Part of social media, part of creating content is about testing ideas and finding your voice through the practice of sharing your voice. So if you aren't moving in imperfect action, which is my favorite philosophy to live by, it's going to be really hard to find your voice and find your rhythm and what it is that you truly want to be talking about that's purposeful for you to share. So go and do it and make sure that you do it in ways that feel right for you. If it's video, if it's writing, pick a format of content that is your personality type, right? Uh, and make and stay there. You don't have to have multiple social media channels or multiple content um, you know, platforms. Choose one and just do that consistently and use that as practice to produce um, good content in the future and also find that voice that truly is already inside of you um, and do it through practice, right? Um, and know that imperfect action is the way to go. Now, if this video has been valuable to you and you've gotten some really great insights today, uh, please share them with me in the comments below. And of course, share this video with others that might be uh, looking for uh, this topic and, and struggling with this and being overwhelmed in content creation. Um, share this channel, share this video. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, and if you are looking for a really easy way to figure out what business you should be starting based on your personality type, lucky for you, I've created awesome tool and it's completely free and it's a quiz that's going to help you to answer just nine powerful questions uh, on uh, what it is that you are most authentic uh, and and naturally inclined to do based on, uh, as a business owner and, and you're going to be able to find out what business model is right for you and how to start that business model based on your own genius zone and you can go to the link that's going to be put up in the cards above uh, to get access to the quiz and I'm sure that you will find uh, some some clarity in finding the results and reading through it for yourself. Thanks so much for joining me today and I will see you in the next video.